G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today we're running through how to clean up Revit models using Dynamo uh, so model cleanup as I call it um, it's actually part of a presentation or a workshop that I'm conducting for Dynamo Sydney user group uh, I would have just conducted it after this video comes out uh, but haven't conducted it yet so if anyone's in Sydney um, I highly welcome you to come along to this group in future uh, we usually meet up once every couple of months and there's maybe about 20 to 30 people in the group um, so let's face it, our Revit models can get pretty messy, especially when we're busy on them and we don't think about model health as much, or maybe the model manager's a little bit lazy, hasn't quite got around to it. So we need to find good ways to clean our models. Um, so things that we can look for, problems that we often see, are too many filters with bad names that aren't in use, view templates that aren't in use that serve a purpose but now don't, uh, line patterns that have come from AutoCAD, and a lot of elements that haven't been purged. So we've got to find a way to solve that using Dynamo. Um, so you can, if we don't clean up these things, we can expect to see issues like large model size, which can lead to slower loading and synchronizing, uh, more crashes, it's harder to find things when you need them, and overall the users will get frustrated by all these things. So people just get unhappy and the project's not as nice to work on. So we're going to be targeting unused filters, unused view templates, uh, imported CAD line patterns, and we're also going to enable the ability for the script to also do a full purge of the model, uh, delete any working views uh, and legends and schedules and these are mainly when you exchange the model so when you do a detach from central and you're going to send it to a consultant for example and these are common things that I'll remove from my models um, when I'm doing a cleanup so two purposes in one um, so Dynamo can clean all of these things up which is great news so we're going to be using some custom nodes today uh, so this is the page I meant to have open um, so we're going to be using some nodes from Orchid which is the purge node. Uh, we're going to be using two nodes from a package called Medelical. One is called Delete Line Patterns, and the other one is Delete Unused View Templates. And the other one is Zebra, um, the Logic If node, which you'll probably know is one of my favorite nodes based on my videos. Um, so Orchid can be downloaded, for, down, downloaded from GitHub. Um, it takes maybe five, 10 minutes to install tops. Um, just follow the instructions on his GitHub. And we're also going to be using data shapes as well. Uh, so I'm going to have some pre-built UIs and I'll also release the, the starter script for people to use if they like with the user interfaces already set up. So there'll be a Google Drive link in the description of the video. Um, there is another node that I wanted to use, uh, which is delete unused filters from Bedelical. But it appears that at least in the build that I'm using in 2.0.3, this node is broken. It doesn't seem to work. Um, there's actually an error about halfway through the Python script. So rather than try and fix it and include it in this video, I just found another place where there was a source that worked. So you're welcome to try this in whichever build you're running, uh, but it may not work. So a solution that I found is there's actually a, a Python script available from BIM1. So if you follow this link here, um, and then you find this link down there, which says download this script, uh, you'll be able to find the Python node in there, which will obtain unused filters. And this one does work at least in 2.0.3. So I'm gonna be using Dynamo 2.0.3. Uh, most of you probably know it's the build that I'm working in currently. I believe that most of these nodes should work in version two at the very least. Um, so without further ado, let's just jump into a messy model. So I've just taken uh, the Revit sample model and I've made it a little bit more messy. So I've basically set up a bunch of view templates. Well, I've, I've got the ones that are already there and you'll see that some of the view templates are applied, but some of them aren't. So we don't really want to keep these potentially uh, because you know they're not in use. So what's the purpose of them? Maybe we need to hold them for later. Maybe we don't. It's up to the model managers to make those calls. But let's say we had 300 view templates. You'd assume most of those aren't useful. Um, as well as that, there's a whole bunch of working views as well. Um, note that when I say working view, it's working in its type. So I recommend always making a working view type for each type of view. So floor plan, RCP, drafting view. You can do that under edit type, duplicate, and just set up a name called working. And we're gonna hunt for any view types that contain working in their name as a target for deletion. Uh, likewise, I've set up just one legend, um, got a bunch of schedules, and usually when I exchange models, I'll delete these uh, because there's no need for the consultants to have those elements. We use those to track our data. They don't typically use them to track theirs. So not usually necessary to keep them. Likewise, there's a whole bunch of families to purge in here. Uh, we also have a whole bunch of lovely line patterns from AutoCAD. So under line patterns and additional settings, you'll sometimes find a whole bunch of these. 
And as a project goes on and on and on, you'll just get more of these as people make the mistake of importing CAD. Um, it's bound to happen and each time there'll be more of these rubbish line styles to come in. So we want to get rid of them. Okay, and I think the last things we'll be targeting are filters. So under here, you can see I've set up just three filters called unused filter and then just one called used filter. So this one's actually being used on a view template applied to a view. So we want to find a way to get rid of all of these filters. So essentially we're going to start with these as our targets. So if I just go to Dynamo, what I've already done is just set up a front end to the script using data shapes and a back end to the script. And we need to build the process in between. Like I said, there'll be a link in, uh, in the description of this video to my Google Drive, which will have this starter script available for you. It also contains this little Python script for getting unused filters that I just spoke about earlier. Okay, so basically all this area is, is a whole bunch of inputs for a user interface. So we have some Booleans or yes, no's uh, for whether we want to delete view templates, filters, line patterns, or purge unused. So each of those feeds into a Boolean. And then I'm putting those into a UI input group as well. On top of that, I've also got Booleans for whether we want to get rid of working views, legends, or schedules. Again, just a bunch of Booleans. And then I'm feeding those into the inputs of a multiple input plus plus form. And I'm just putting in a name for the script, a logo, and just naming the buttons and setting the size of my user interface. And then I'm getting all the outputs. It doesn't really matter what you call these. What's important is that you call this list the same thing. And all I'm doing is just getting the indexes of each of those rows. The only reason I'm naming these is so I can understand at this point what my outputs are. So view templates, filters, line patterns, purge all, working views, legends, and schedules. So basically just all true falses. So if I just quickly run my script as it stands, and I'll just go and disable the backend. Actually, I'll, yeah, I'll disable the backend for now. And I'll show you that in a second. That's our results essentially. So if I run it as it stands, we get a whole bunch of tick boxes from the data shapes package. So I'll just tick off a couple of these. So let's say we only want to do a few of these things. If we run the script, we should expect that we won't necessarily get trues and falses for each of these. We'll get a list of Booleans, which we're going to feed through further into our script to determine what's deleted and what isn't. And on the back end of our script, we have some results in the form of text notes in data shapes as well. So we're going to just basically tell the user how many things were deleted of each thing or whether the model was purged and then also how many working views, legends and schedules were deleted as well. So we're going to need to count some of our data. And then at the end, we basically trigger another user, user interface. But let's actually get to the good stuff. So let's actually start building our script. So what we need to do first is find all our working views. So I'm just going to get all views. So I'm going to get the, the category for views with a category by name. Okay, so I'll get all views and then I'll get all elements of category. So when you're dealing with views, um, the first thing I'll usually need to do is actually manage out some nulls because there's usually some strange views in a Revit model uh, that don't actually represent uh, a logical view. I'm just going to turn off my user interface and freeze it for now, just so we can focus on this part of my script. So if I run this, we'll get a whole bunch of elements, but see, we get occasionally a null. See that 12 there? So that's going to actually interrupt my data flow. So I need to get rid of that. So I'm just going to run a Boolean for object is null. And I just want to get rid of all my nulls. And I'm going to use one of my favorite nodes, which is filter by Boolean mask. This node is an absolute lifesaver in so many scenarios. Okay, so if I run that at that point, that should filter out my null as its own list. And we can continue forward with the rest of our views. So we want to go from there and get the parameter, uh, the parameter value by name of the view type. Uh, so we'll get, get parameter value by name. And we're working with our out list here. So we want uh, type. I'm only going to release the script as it starts because I want you guys to follow along and build your own. Um, I have had requests a couple of times just to release my scripts as they're finished, uh, but I'd much rather you get a chance to build this yourself. And I think a lot of my users are really benefiting, benefiting from that. Um, so I'll think about it in the future. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is just get an equals node, and we just want to make sure that it actually has a type. Because we want to filter out those that don't have a type, and I'll show you why in a second. So if I run this, you'll see that we'll filter out some. So you'll see some are true. So for example, if we look at index 8, 9, 10, and 11, and we go here, you'll notice that we have a whole bunch here that don't have a view type. It's interesting that some of these don't have a type, actually. We'll have to check why in a second and see what's causing that. Okay. So what we're going to do is just filter by boolean mask again. Ah, okay, so they don't have a view, a view family type, that's why. Okay, so we want to manage those views out as well. So we're going to filter uh, this, I think this out list actually. Yep, we're going to filter our out list first using that mask just to obtain our views that do have a view type. Uh, actually, we need to filter based on this list. And then we're also going to filter our type as well. So we're going to take this list and filter it to get the types that do actually contain this. So at this point, we have two lists. We have rep one representing all our view types, and we have one representing all our views as well. There we go. So you can see those two lists, lists are now separate and we can handle those separately. From there, we want to get the name of those view types. So we're going to get an element name node. And we want to get our out node again. And that will give us a list of the names of all those view types. And some of those should contain working. See these ones down here that all contain working? We want to manage those out. So again, we're going to do a string contains in this case. And we're just going to see if that string contains the word working, because maybe you'll have things called working plan, working RCP. So we're just going to hunt for working. And we do want to ignore case in this case, just in case people use all caps or lowercase or upper capitalization. Okay, so we'll do that. And then we're also going to filter the results of our original views by Boolean mask. So we're going to take our outs of our views and then we'll mask them based on this. And what we should get now is all of our working views separate at the top. There we go. So you can see that now we've got all of our working views here. And then we've got our non-working views down the bottom. So nice and easy. What we're gonna do from there is actually get all our legends as well. So we're gonna check if the type of our views is equal to legend in the element name as well. So we're going to get another equals node because some of these will be called legend. Well, that should be. Yeah, so there you go. You can see we have the legend down the bottom there. So we're going to check if that is equal to legend in order to isolate our legend views. So we'll just take that. And then again, we're going to do another filter by Boolean masks. So you can see we're doing a lot of filtering here. So we're going to filter those views back there by this mask to get all our legends. In this, in this case, it's only one. There you go. That, that isolates our legend view. So what we have now is our working views and our legend views. So we can proceed forward with these. Um, we also want to get our schedules as well. So we're just going to go back to the start and take these three nodes and just bring them forward over here. And we're just looking for schedules. And that should give us all of our schedules as elements. So we've got those three portions that we're hunting down. So what we need to do there is actually take some if nodes. So we're just going to take a logic if node. And we're just going to take three of them. So one for each of those, those things that we're targeting. So the first we're dealing with is going to be our working views out of our in node. And we're going to feed all of these into our true in this case. Because if it's true, we want to delete these elements. So this is going to be our true outcome. And the trues, as you can guess, are going to come from our user interface. But if it's false, we're going to feed in an empty list to delete instead. Because we're going to delete the output of these. Okay. 
So what we're going to do is just go and collect our booleans from here. So we're going to take our working views boolean and feed that in to our test. And then we're also going to connect the test from our legends and the test from our schedules as well. And so if these are true, we're going to delete them. So we're going to do a list create just to put these all together into one. And we're gonna we're gonna get our Archilab node for element delete. I found this is a really reliable node for deleting things. It can delete just about anything in Revit. So I highly recommend using this one. There's so many delete nodes available across lots of packages, but I found the Archilab one is definitely the most reliable. But what we need to do with that then is also count our results. So we're gonna get a list count because we want to find out how many things we're deleting. So we're going to count the number of things coming out of our, the back end of our script. And obviously if it's an empty list, zero things will come out of the list. So this will report correctly even if you don't end up deleting these elements, if you choose not to tick the boolean. And we're just going to convert all of those things into a string with string from object so that we can feed these into our text note. And we'll take that and we'll take that. And there we go. So we've pretty much got a set of results that we can feed across to our user interface at that point. So we're just going to connect those up to the next stage of our script. And we'll unfreeze this when we're ready to run the script to fully delete our model. But essentially this is able to delete all working view types, legends and schedules. So that's the first part done. The second part involves some more, um, some more custom nodes. Um, in this case, we're going to be targeting some of those other elements such as view templates, line patterns, and all those things. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our unused view templates. So we're going to take that Modelical node, and we're going to get those delete unused view templates. And essentially this is just activated by a toggle, which is a true false in this case. So this one's really easy. We just feed that in, and we can delete all our unused view templates. And the good thing about this one is it will give you a line for each template it deletes. So all we need to do is count our results and we'll count the number of items that are being deleted. Um, but if you don't delete things using this node, so if I just hook up a, a boolean here with a true, actually with a false, is it will actually output a message that says uh, set toggle to true to delete unused view templates. So we want to find out when that's occurring because that's obviously not the outcome that we want when we're setting ourselves to true. So we're just going to get item at index zero from our results, because sometimes that might be that message, sometimes it might be a list of view templates. We just want to check if it's got the words set toggle, and we'll just say we're being case sensitive and uh, we're ignoring case. So we're going to take the output of that node, and we're going to check if the string contains set toggle. So we're going to say, does this string contain set toggle and we'll ignore case. And we're going to get a logic if node from Zebra. And we'll say, if it does, then what we want to actually feed through is the number zero. Otherwise, we want to feed through the count of how many things we're deleting as a view template. So that's one part sorted again. From there, we can just go string from object and we can feed that through to the view templates node. So that's the first step. The next thing we need to deal with is our filters. So we're gonna call on this Python script and we're just gonna go and reconnect our view templates here. So the way that this Python script works is it will just get all the unused filters in the project. Um, so it's nice and convenient, uh, really useful. But we don't even need to connect that there actually because that's gonna run in either case what we want to do is get a logic if, again, from Zebra, and we want to say, if this boolean is true, we're going to feed through our unused filters, and if it's not, we're going to feed through an empty list to delete. That way we don't delete our unused filters unless we want to. And we're going to feed that off to an element delete node from Archilab. I'll just make doubly sure that I'm using the right one. Cool. So that's going to delete an empty list or the filters depending on the outcome. 
And regardless of what happens, we obviously want to count this list as well and see how many things were deleted. Was it an empty list or was it each of those filters? And we'll take a string from object node and we'll just process that through to the output in our text node at the end of our script. So the next thing we need is our line patterns node. Um, this one's a little bit more tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the node. I'm not going to run it, but basically it will give you a message telling you how many things it deleted. So you can't use the count node in this case. You actually need to basically isolate a piece of text or a number out of the node. So we're going to take this as our toggle in this case, and we're going to find the first index of a space using string index of. I'll show you the data flow and how this all works after we run the script, just so you understand why we've done all these things. So if I run it once, I'm obviously gonna clean my project, which I don't wanna do yet. So we're gonna find the first value of space. And we're gonna ignore case. All right, so what we need to do then is we need to find a substring. So we're gonna, we're gonna do string substring. And in this case, our string is our message. Our start index will be zero and our length will be the index of the first space because we want to get the number right at the front, but we don't know if it's going to be one or 10 or 148. So we don't know how many characters that is. So we need to actually detect where that space occurs so we can get that number in full from our substring. But basically with that, we can take that substring and we can feed that through as well. Uh, sorry, we'll take it to our text note here. And the last thing we need to do is actually purge our document. So we can just take the, the node document purge. And this comes from the orchid package. So it basically has the option to completely purge, which we do want to do. So we're gonna feed that, that Boolean back here into purge. Okay. If you, if you absolutely wanna make sure this can't purge in any case, you could feed in a logic node to give it a, a bad piece of data for the document. Otherwise it just by default will go to the active document. So that's another way to be absolutely sure you're protecting yourself from the purge function. Okay, but what we're gonna do then is we're just gonna turn our Boolean into a string. So if it's true, it will say true. If it's false, it will say false. And we'll feed that string through to our text node for purging. So at this point, we're pretty much ready to run our script in full but I'll show you the data flow as well. So I'm gonna unfreeze my UI and I'm just gonna set it to true for, for toggle. And I'm just gonna close my project and just reopen it so that it refreshes everything. But at this point, we're safe to run this script. So I'm just gonna run everything and get rid of everything in my model that I don't want. So I'm gonna run my script and you'll see that we're just gonna, by default, let everything be on and I will run it. And we should expect a secondary interface to come up from our results at the end with our text notes. Uh, actually, I must have set my interface to false. Yes, I did. That's a shame. Let's see if I can just trigger it to come up by running it. There we go. So that's what should have come up. But in this case, I believe I might need to rerun it because of that. Yes, I need to rerun it. So I'm just gonna close my script. Actually, I'll, I'll save my script, but I need to reopen my model because some things can't be taken back in Dynamo. So we can't take back the action of deleting views or deleting legends or schedules. So we'll just reopen our project before we purged it. So you just need to be careful when you run a script like this. Okay, so we should be able to rerun that properly now and get our results window, and then we'll check out our data flow. So I'll run my script, we'll delete everything. And we should expect all those string from objects to tell us what's happened. Cool, so we can see we've got rid of seven view templates, three filters, seven line patterns, we have purged. We got rid of nine working views, one legend and eight schedules um, with two clicks. So including one of them just being run and one being okay. So pretty easy. Um, so let's go and look at our data flow. So we know that we got all our working views, all our legends and all our schedules. So we can see that out of each of these, we should have ended up with a list of working views, uh, which we can't, we can't see because of the data flow 
with data shapes, which is unfortunate uh, because you can't see data flow on certain nodes due to the sequential running of data shapes. So what I might do is I might just set this to false and we're going to rerun that one more time so that you can see the full logic behind it. So we'll, we'll let data shapes basically only run it past the point and then the secondary interface will stop it from filtering itself. Because basically that second stage of data shapes commits all the data so you can't see the backstream. Bit, a bit, bit, of a, bit of a drawback of using data shapes I guess but ideally you'd be running this out of Dynamo Player in either case because we have a two click script essentially. I'll just reopen my Dynamo script and reboot Dynamo. Come on, Dynamo. Anytime now. I've noticed Dynamo seems to be getting slower and slower to open um, for some reason as I use it more. I think I'm confusing it. Alright, so we're on our script and we won't see the secondary interface, but we'll see everything up to the point where the user interface would be generated. So let's try that again, one more time. But we shouldn't see our secondary interface. Great. So now we hopefully should be able to see all our data flow. So we should be able to see our working views. Oh, we still can't. Must be something interrupting the data flow in the data shapes workflow. But we can see our counts coming through for those, uh, those nodes. Sorry, it's just my cat. Uh, and we can see portions of our data flow. We just can't seem to see some of our filter by Boolean masks. So there must be a portion of the script that's blocking it off. I guess you saw the data flow here before. I'll see if you can see the data flow up here so you can see why we had to process some of these nodes in particular ways. So you'll see here that our unused view templates generates the name of each template that's been removed. So that's how we can just count it. Uh, but we need to still check for the set toggle occurring so that we can push through zero otherwise. Because if you get that message, it sees the list length as one. So you don't want it to say that you deleted one view template because otherwise the users might get a bit freaked out and think they've removed a template when, they, when actually they haven't. Um, so here's this, this node that detects all the unused filters and sends them through. So that's why we can just count them as they are. Um, on top of that, we have our line patterns that we've got rid of. So it just says, see how it says seven line patterns have been deleted? It's a bit of a pain, so we have to find that number. That's why we end up getting the substring of that number. So I've got a, <laughs> a cat in my way at the moment. That's all right, I'll keep going. We can just pretend my cat's talking to you. Um, you can see here we've purged our document. Um, it doesn't actually give a message at the end, so we can't really turn that into a message. Um, that's why we just have to say it's been purged or it hasn't been purged. It would be nice if it could detect how much has been purged, um, but unfortunately it can't. But essentially that's what feeds into our, our backend interface. So that's how we can put together all that data. So nice and easy. Um, so And you can run it out of Dynamo Player as well. But let's go just double check that it's actually worked in our project. Okay. So if I go to manage view templates, you'll see that it's got rid of all those templates that we weren't using. Sorry, this cat's really in the way. Um, it's also got rid of the filters, but it's kept the one that's in use. So that's great. It should have got rid of all of our CAD line patterns. <laughs> Sorry, this cat's licking my hand. Must taste great. Um, see all the CAD patterns are gone, so goodbye AutoCAD. Um, all my working views have been removed, which is which is great as well. My legends and my schedules have also been removed too. But we can obviously selectively do that by picking up booleans. Um, so that's pretty much the whole workflow. Hopefully that gives you a tool you can work with um, when you're cleaning up your model or preparing it for exchange. Um, so thanks for watching today. Hopefully that, that, that was interesting. And again, the, there will be a link in the description of the video um, for a Google Drive where I'll have the start point of that for you to, you to begin with and follow along so that you don't have to set up all the data shapes interface. If you've got any comments or feedback, feel free to leave it down below. And thanks for watching today. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.